Welcome back to Lunch with the Librarian. I am the Librarian, I'm Miss Jen, um, and we're back here in the lovely South Holland Youth Services Kitchen. And today we are taking advantage of some of, some of the leftovers of ingredients we had last week and making a creamy, cheesy broccoli soup like, um, like you would get at Panera for lunch today. Um, it's really nice out and it's a little bit too warm. Like I couldn't, I'm not really a soup in hot weather kind of girl, but if you are like my husband who can eat hot soup, like boiling hot soup when it's 95 degrees out, that today's recipe should not be a problem for you. Um, before we start, before I start cooking, I'm going to wash my hands and make sure that they are clean. I'm going to tie my hair back so that they're, so I don't get hair in my food because this is going to be more food than just for me today. But again, if you want to do leftovers of this or if you're feeding a bunch of people, then this is a good recipe again. So I'll be right back with clean hands and, um, and we can get cooking with our soup. All right, I'm back. My hands are clean and my hair is back and uh, we're ready to get cooking. So today's recipe, we're not making the soup completely from scratch. Um, while that is delicious and, um, and it offers you a lot more control over um, what you're making and how salty or rich or whatever it is, um, you're probably hungry right now. And so you want something that is quick, uh, as quick as possible and delicious. So um, let's, let's just get going. Um, the first thing, sorry, the first thing I'm going to do is set my pot, um, my empty soup pot on the, uh, on the stove top behind me and set it to about a medium level of heat. This is an electric stove that we have here, so it's going to take a little bit longer for the pot to get hot. Um, and right now there's nothing in it, but there will be in just a second. Um, if you have a gas stovetop or a gas range, your pot will heat up much, much faster. So um, don't put your pot on the stovetop if you have a gas range until there's stuff in it. So not that that's gonna be on the stovetop very long, but I'll be right back um, to do that. I am turning on my stovetop to about medium and setting my pot on top of it, um, right there. Last week my dad watched and he suggested that I should have like a lot more aerial shots. So I'm gonna to try to do that for you this time, dad. Um, no promises. So the first thing that's gonna go into our pot is a can of condensed cream of chicken soup. Um, this is the large size can. It's a family sized can. It's a 26 ounce can of soup. Um, if you don't have one large can like this, two small cans, two small cans are the equivalent. So either one large can like this or two smaller cans of the condensed soup, not the already just heated up and ready to eat. Um, so you get your, your can opener, that's what that's called, and open up your can of soup and dump it into your pot. I'm gonna go and do that. Use a spoon to kind of get all of the guts out of the can. Um, I'm gonna go do that right now. And I'll show you what it looks like. It's kind of gross coming out of here, but that's okay. It looks like just a big old like weird solid mess. Let me bring the camera over so that you can see what it looks like. We are gonna add liquid to this. So it's not like, um, it's not gonna stay like this. I'm gonna use a rubber spatula to scoop everything from the can into the pot. You don't wanna leave any 
like you're gonna end up leaving a little bit just because you're not gonna be able probably to get all get all of it but try to get as much out of the can with your spatula as you can sorry you were looking at my the side of my head which is not that exciting as a person who's looked at the side of my head every day for 45 years the side of my head is not that exciting um, so I've dumped all of the condensed soup from the can into the pot. I got a little bit on me, so I'm gonna wipe off my hand. The next thing I'm gonna to add to the pot is milk. To thin it out, the creamier, the more fat in the milk, the creamier your soup is gonna be. This is whole milk. This is like kind of the fattiest, richest kind of cow milk that you can get. If you're, um, if you're watching your girlish figure and you want to use skim milk, that's fine. Um, if you don't, um, if you don't tolerate dairy well and you want to use like an almond milk or a plant milk, that works as well. Just know that the creaminess of the soup is going to, um, is going to depend A, on what kind of milk you use and B, how much of it you use. Start with a cup and see how much, uh, how creamy it is and whether or not you want to add more. And now what I'm using, what I'm doing as I'm talking to you is I'm using a balloon whisk that is a whisk that looks like this. You can see that like I've been stirring to smooth out Dang it, I cannot. Hang on. I am so sorry that this is so jumpy and choppy. But I'm using my balloon whisk to incorporate the milk and the condensed soup together. If you are vegetarian, and you are trying to make this meat free and you don't want to use cream of chicken soup to do your cream of broccoli and cheese soup, you can feel free to use whatever condensed cream soup you like. Um, you can use cream of broccoli soup. I wouldn't. Um, for me, broccoli and canned soup, it always kind of comes out looking sort of grayish and weird. Um, see, now it's all kind of creamy and, um, and all of the milk is incorporated. I would like this a little bit thinner, so I am going to add in more liquid. Um, Especially because we're going to add in cheese in a minute and that'll thicken stuff right up. So I'll be right back. All right. So if you are using a gas stove, put the soup mix and the milk in your pot, give it a stir, and then put it on a medium flame on your gas stove top. Um, it'll come to a simmer. What that looks like is... Sorry. That how it's a little bit bubbly, but it's not like a super high, Ooh, lordy bee. It's boiling a little hard, so I'm gonna turn it down just a little bit. I don't, it's hot all the way through obviously, but I don't want it to like be too hot to eat. So I'm just letting it simmer right now. So I've thinned out the soup a little bit with a little bit more milk. Um, you might hear the microwave on in the background. What I am doing right now is cooking the broccoli that's gonna go into the soup. Um, before that happens, we're gonna add the cheese. So again, the same, our leftover shredded cheese from just a couple of days ago when, we, when I made the baked potatoes. Um, 
you're gonna add in about two cups of cheese. This is a large family sized bag of cheese. So I wanna measure this out using a one cup measuring cup. If you have the smaller bags of shredded cheese, those are usually about two cups of cheese so you can just dump the whole bag in. Um, I need to measure this. So cup number one into the pot. Cup number two into the pot. Um, put my cheese away. And then, just like I did to incorporate the milk into the soup, I'm using my balloon whisk to whisk everything together and melt that cheese. If you don't have a balloon whisk at home, that's fine. Just use a spoon. Um, what you want to make sure though is if you are using a pot with a non-stick coating on it, like a like something that is um, like Teflon or something like that, if you're using a coated um, pan, don't use a metal spoon or whisk in that because it'll scratch the coating off and that is not what you want. Notice how the soup has gotten oranger because it has taken on the color of the cheese. There's no more cheese left unmelted in the soup. It's all smooth. The microwave is done. You heard the beeping. So I'm gonna go and get the broccoli out of the microwave. And just, I just steamed it in the microwave according to the directions that were on the bag of broccoli. Um, and then I'm gonna dump in. Um, the recipe calls for about 10 to 12 ounces of broccoli. I would cut it up into, or break it apart if it's already still frozen, um, into small pieces so that they fit easily on a spoon, especially Especially if you're feeding um, little ones, you don't want pieces that are so big they might choke on them. So um, make sure that your broccoli is bite-sized. To me, the smaller the better. Whisk it all in. Ooh. Just like that. If it's not cooked all the way, that's fine. Um, and if you steam it in the microwave and it's not cooked all the way, that's all right. It'll finish cooking in the soup, which we're going to let simmer for five minutes. So, timer, five minutes start. And I will see you in five minutes when the soup is done. All right, it's been five minutes. Um, the last thing that you want to do before you stir, or before you serve this soup, I'm stirring it right now, is to season it. Um, so we're gonna use a couple of different things. Use what you like. Honestly, um, if you don't wanna use one or all of these items, that's not that big a deal. Um, before you add any salt, taste it to see if it tastes salty enough to you. Um, especially with um, condensed soups that are not labeled low sodium, they can be super, super salty. Um, so make sure that there's, um, that it tastes salty enough to your taste before you add any salt. Um, I'm also going to add black pepper, about a half a teaspoon for the whole pot at first. And then I'll taste it to see if it needs more. Um, sometimes people like a real peppery soup, sometimes they don't. Um, depends completely upon the tastes of the people for whom you're cooking. Um, another thing that I'm gonna use to season my soup is garlic powder. Notice garlic powder 
not garlic salt. Um, again, same thing with the regular table salt. Um, when you don't know how salty the soup, the condensed soup that you're using is, you don't want to add anything. Um, you don't want to add salt on top of salt on top of salt because um, then it would just be inedible and disgusting. But a little bit of garlic powder, I got a half a teaspoon for the whole pot. You don't really want any more than that um, to season it up. Another thing that you can use is mustard powder. Um, you may or may not know that that is a spice that you can purchase at the grocery store. It's where all the other spices and herbs are, um, like in the baking aisle where the um, like baking spices and flour and sugar and stuff are. Um, there's It usually comes like uh, in a yellow box. It, there's a brand name called Coleman's. They make mustard powder and it's just like crushed up mustard seeds. If you have mustard seeds at your house but you don't have mustard powder, you can crush up the mustard seeds and add those in too. Or if you don't have either one of those but you want kind of that tangy kind of zing, um, which is which is really good because it'll cut through kind of the creaminess and the richness of the soup. Um, you could also just like add a squirt of mustard into your soup. I would use Dijon um, because it's a little less, um, it's a little bit more mild, not like the mustard you would put on a hot dog. Um, but I don't have mustard powder. I only had mustard seeds and I didn't crush them up um, this morning. So no mustard. Uh, and we don't have any mustard at the library. So I don't get to use that in my soup. Um, but otherwise, now that I have added in a garlic powder and I've added in pepper, I, didn't add, I did not add salt because to me it didn't need it. But I don't really like super salty food. Unless it's potatoes, then you can't have enough salt on them. Um, this is, let me take my balloon whisk and put it in the free, in the sink to wash it. That is what your broccoli cheese soup looks like. Um, maybe you've added more broccoli because that's what you like and that's awesome. Um, it should look, let me grab my ladle so that I can serve it up. Um, here is the consistency of that creamy soup. Um, notice that it coats the ladle really well. I'm trying not to be messy, but I want to show y'all what that looks like. Um, if you are lucky enough to have a bread bowl at your house, do it. I mean, what soup isn't better in a bread bowl? But even if you don't, this is a super warm and cozy and cheesy quick lunch to make for a bunch of people. This also refrigerates well. You can eat part of it today, part of it later. Um, and when it gets cool and you feel like a bowl of soup, here's how to not have to spend 10 bucks on soup with Panera. Thanks for having lunch with me today. And I'll see you.